In this video, I'm going to cover six of the most stupidly genius game-changing mix tricks you've probably never seen, including two that will get you even bigger mixes without having to buy any other plugins. The first deals with easily the most annoying, harsh noise generating evil pair of mics anyone ever has to deal with in a mix. Not only are they annoying, but 100% necessary for creating excitement and movement in a mix. One problem, well, actually multiple problems. These harsh noise screaming banshees absolutely love fighting with guitars. But if you over EQ them, you end up with maybe some crazy EQ settings like this and weirdly thin sounding cymbals as a result. One of the coolest tricks for controlling overhead mics is actually using a signal generator. What the f is this? Okay, not just a signal generator, but a signal generator in combination with some EQ matching wizardry. In your DAW, get an aux track, add a signal generator, and turn that shit off or mute it. We don't want to hear that shit, like at all. Then you're going to want to bring an EQ that has matching EQ on it and insert that on the aux track. I personally prefer Ozone EQ. Then you're going to set the signal generator to pink noise and then you're going to sample that baddie and save this preset. Now let's go over to the symbols and then add an instance of Ozone EQ and go to the match setting and then upload that reference pink noise. Then go to a really simply symbol part like a chorus and while it plays, capture that shit. Now bring down the pink noise matching all the way. And while the cymbals and guitars and snares are playing, adjust the smoothing and amount to about 5 to 10%. And not only are the cymbals and guitars playing more nicely together, listen to that snare. It probably has a little bit more life to it. But there's actually another cool trick to get even more space between the guitars and cymbals so they aren't clashing together. Get it? Crashing. Moving on. For this trick, I recommend Eventime's underrated Precision Time Align plugin. And on your main rhythm guitar tracks, throw this baddie on there. Now you're gonna wanna move the delay amount back by three to 10 milliseconds. For me, I personally like to do between three and seven milliseconds most of the time when I do this trick. And the guitars are behind just enough that you get the sensation that they're in the pocket with the cymbals. And if you're doing chords and riffs, well, automate that shit off when you're riffing and when chords come in or halftime parts, automate it back on. And this next one is probably one of my favorites, but can also be a little dangerous. You clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. So if you're like me when you mix, you probably run into one or both of these scenarios. Your EQ and mix moves make sense for a chorus, but then the verse comes and they don't really mesh well, vice versa. So you automate the EQ and move on with your day. Or you duplicate the plugin instance and automate one off and engage the other. Both of these techniques work, but sometimes when mixing, you end up with a session where you maybe have three or four plugins like this that you're bypassing. So a clean way to get around this is using this nice little hack. Okay, so on screen, can you see something different from the Plugin Alliance plugin and the other SSL plugin? Time's up. Well, you see, there are four comparison scenes with A, B, C, D on the Plugin Alliance plugin. You can start with the A scene as your main scene and then utilize the B, C, and D scenes as your alternatives for like when a chorus or bridge happens and you have a lot of things happening that you need to make more or less room for with EQ or compression. In Pro Tools, you can automate each scene. I really, really hope other plugin companies are watching this and taking note and this becomes a new standard. Now this next one is one that I figured out after headache after headache of not being able to get the outside kick drum to ever work in a mix. No matter what I did, it just never sat right. It was too woofy, too boomy, and I just would end up sample replacing it anyway. This was until I had an epiphany one day. So in the electronic music world, kicks are shaped with envelope shapers and designed with sound waves. So naturally, I went down a rabbit hole and came up with this trick that I personally never seen, but has changed my kick drum processing before any EQ. I used two plugins for this. One, a transient shaper, and two, drum gate from Sonics. For now, we're gonna ignore the transient shaper. In drum gate, make sure that the kick is selected on auto match transients. Next, we'll go to the gate's open threshold and just get the outside kick. From here, we go to the decay panel and really tighten that bad boy up. The settings on screen are a decent starting point, but all you just really wanna hear is the body of the outside kick drum. And then this next part is gonna be what creates a consistent low end that still sounds natural and not synthesized. And there's no fighting with the compressor or limiter because on board of drum gate has this handy dandy leveler. Hit auto set and let it do its magic. I recommend doing this on a chorus or bridge with loads of tracks going at once. But the best part is you can automate the soft and loud targets. Then with the track playing, fine tune the sustain of the outside kick with the transient shaper. And now you've got a consistent outside kick. I like it a lot. Okay, so these next two I got from Adam Hawkins and Jack Joseph Puig that at first sounded a little ridiculous. So I already know when you hear them, you're gonna be like, huh? 
Adam Hawkins discovered his little trick by accident. In a mix breakdown, he spoke about working on a 21 Pilots record, and he couldn't get some of the tracks to sound like the reference tracks that were printed. So growing frustrated, Adam asked the band's producer for the sessions, which happened to be in Logic, and he was mixing in Pro Tools. So he started manually migrating each session into Pro Tools, painstakingly copying each setting. In doing this, Adam discovered for some odd reason, some plugin stereo effects sounded different in Logic compared to Pro Tools, even though they shared the same exact settings. The solution he stumbled across that led him to being able to get a more accurate sound to the Logic session was by creating two mono aux buses. One panned hard left and the other panned hard right, each with the same plugin and settings, which oddly worked. And Jack Joseph Puig's trick is similar. It's one he mentioned while answering a question at a live mixing seminar at some audio convention. What Jack Joseph Puig will do is add a center aux track in combination to the left and right effects. He stated by doing this, he can sometimes get a more 3D vocal with the delays and reverbs by processing three mono track effects instead of the standard stereo aux tracks or multi-mono. I know both of these tricks sound so stupid, but have made such a difference in creating more lush 3D blends in my mixes. And pretty much every trick in this video I've covered on my mailing list months ago. So if you want more, you can find a link in the description to join. But this is just the tip of the iceberg to epically genius tricks every engineer should have in their mix bag. Which is why you'll want to check out this video right here for some genius tricks from pro mixers you should steal.